Hello? Well, it looks like the old dog's got some new tricks, or at least the old tricks are still working. So throw! Hockey oh yeah. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Dohyo here on Mr. JWAG's channel. We are back recapping a stunningly amazing Nagoya Basho. But before we jump into that, I just wanted to let you all know if any of you are just hardcore Mr. JWAG stands and cannot get enough of this voice, I am working on a podcast called Thrash and Treasure. It is a podcast where, with the help of a celebrity guest, me and my co-host Aaron Ware, along with a bunch of rotating co-hosts other than me, we talk to this celebrity guest and we review a heavy metal album and a Broadway album, and we talk about the celebrity guest and their amazing life and career. Uh, I have a playlist right up here if anyone is interested with all the episodes where I am co-hosting but even if you aren't here for Mr. J Wax, but just love a pop culture and fun talk, check it out. Thrash and Treasure at Spotify, Apple Music, and anywhere you get podcasts. Is we still call them podcasts? All right, well, a lot of you watched the predictions this time, and a lot of you were calling for this, so here we go. J Wax was wrong. But we do have to be fair, I got a lot of very specific predictions right, and I will tell you about them, but I, I did miss the forest for the tree. And of course, when I say the tree, I mean Yokozuna Terunofuji. The old oak returns for yet another Yusho, getting him his tenth, amazing us with his powers of strong round numbers. Terunofuji is back for his second full Basho this year, and he has won the Yusho in both of those tournaments. So in a way, I am torn. Number one, I'm very elated that we have a Yokozuna who is still capable of coming back and winning Yusho at this stage of, what the well, just injury. But I feel like we have also missed a huge opportunity with this Basho to possibly start building the legacy of another younger wrestler. But I guess to do that, you, you gotta beat the guys who are still there. And Terra Nafuji ain't going anywhere. Yet. So this channel and most of Sumo has been openly talking about uh, Terra uh, upcoming retirement for at least a year now, uh, but it just doesn't seem to be that upcoming. How many more matches can we get out of this very broken body? Now, we have seen a few Yokozuna in the past few years sort of like wind down their career, and this feels much more like a Kakudu as opposed to a Hakuho. As we all remember, Hakuho finished with a Zensho Yusho beating current Yokozuna Terunofuji on the final day. Terunofuji in this tournament uh, seemed to hit a wall around day eight, where, around the Ura match, and after that, he didn't seem that he was dominating the way he was week one. It makes sense. He is an older wrestler. He has all of the joint injuries, but he did not finish strong, losing three of his last five, going from a two-match lead to being forced into a playoff with Takanosho. I mean, absolutely nothing against Takanosho, gonna talk about him in a second, but it just feels that if Terunofuji were at all feeling his oats, this, this wouldn't have gone to a playoff. As I have said before, I think the best case scenario for Terunofuji this year was finishing two whole tournaments, and he has, and he's won both of them. Uh, does he have another this year? I, I mean, face it, he's been proving me wrong for quite a bit, but eventually, time has got to catch up to those knees. Since I clearly cannot be trusted about Terunofuji predictions, hit me in the comment. What do you think the next year holds for Terunofuji's career? And of course, getting our Junyu show, Maiga Shira 6 Takano show, having an amazing tournament. This is his third Junyu show and his third Kanto show. He has tied his wins record for a tournament, of course, doing this before in March of 2020, and we are just going to see how much they promote him in the next Banzake. Uh, depending on how many Sekiwake we have, he could end up at Komasubi or Maiga Shira 1 next tournament. We've had a lot of news coming from the Ozeki rank when... As predicted, Kirishima got a Kachikoshi, but not the 10 wins needed to bust out of Ozeki Wake back to Ozeki. So Kirishima is now a Sekiwake, for better or for worse. And oddly enough, next tournament will only be Kirishima's fourth total tournament at Sekiwake. It took him two to get to Ozeki, and then it's now taken him to, I guess, to leave Ozeki. Takakesho did not go Kyujo as expected, but did get a 5 and 10, and maybe should have gone Kyujo. Rumors are that he has just secured his elder stock, so we may not be seeing a sort of Takeyasu Kotoshogiku-esque fall down the Banzuke. We may see a very quick intai from Takakesho if he does not remake Ozeki with 10 wins in the next tournament. And I have to say, not optimistic. 
Now, both these guys are going to be 28 starting the next tournament, so these guys could have another act in sumo. Uh, not super optimistic, but if I were going to pick one, I'd say Kidishima has a good shot to extend his career over the next three or four years. Our other Ozeki, Kota Zakada and Hoshodu, did fine. They, they seem to hold serve. They seem to be just locked into, we're going to get between 9 and 11 wins, and we're going to be totally cool with that. Obviously, they'd like to do better, but they just don't seem to be able to have the consistency to not lose any of those sort of easy matches the Ozeki get in the first week. Because truly, that seemed to be the difference in this tournament. Terran Fuji just kept racking up these wins in the first week, and they weren't all blowouts. Some of them are very close, but... A win is a win. Terunofuji had them all racked up, and even when Terunofuji started losing steam down the stretch, no one was close enough to take advantage. Hoshodu also went Kyujo at the end with that hip maneuver he had against Kota Zakada. We are hoping that, uh, like some of his other late tournament Kyujo, this one is not going to be too serious and he was just being safe. Now, I was very surprised that uh, other than Takakesho and Terunofuji, the entire Sanyaku got between 8 and 10 wins. So a, a very strong showing for the Sanyaku overall. I was definitely wrong about Abi and Hiro Umi. I was expecting them to take a bunch of the losses up at the top of the Bonsuke. Abi got an 8 and 7 and Hiro Umi did great. Gonna talk about him in the Attaboys. So yes, other than Takakesho, it seems like the rest of the Sanyaku is sort of holding serve where they're at. Now, Onosato did, as predicted, Kachikoshi, but not necessarily up in the tournament leaders. Uh, this seemed to be the tournament where people had started adjusting to Onosato. That he's not a surprise anymore. Now I think Onosato's gonna go away with the former Kisuno Sato, come up with some new plans, and return very strong in September. I still think we could see an Ozeki Onosato by the end of the year. Daesho, 8 and 7, as predicted, solid Komasubi. Uh, he's not going to get bumped up to Sekiwake, but who might be is the other Komasubi, Hiro Umi, who ended with a 10 and 5 and his first Gino Show prize. And speaking of Hiro Umi, that takes us to Uncle Sumo's Attaboys. <laughs> Of course, Uncle Sumo's Attaboys is a recurring segment where we talk about the wrestlers who had a great tournament but maybe didn't get all the press. Now, Hiro do Umi, uh, okay, like, I'm sorry, I just, I look at this guy, I look at these short little arms and that just generally does not work for Sumo. Takakesho accepted. But the spirit is so clearly there. This man is a winner. He went in there, tackled the entire toughest slate they could throw at him, and won two-thirds of his matches. People forget because he's been in the top division for a while. He's the same age as Ono Sato, 24. We have a lot more excellent sumo from this man. Uh, and I just have to stop judging him based on his size. But really, I can't say anything bad about a guy who made Komasubi for the first time at 24 and had his best ever record. Hirodoumi, attaboy. Next on the list, Maiga Shira's 14, Wakataka Kage and Endo, both making their triumphant returns from Judo to get double-digit wins, Wakataka Kage with 11 and Endo with 10. Glad to see both of these guys are back and they are fighting well. I think Sumo's better when we have guys like Wakataka Kage and Endo in it. Welcome back. Maegashira 12, Chuda no Umi. Now, this guy has been very under the radar for me. He has just been inching his way through Judo for years and has been up in Makauchi for now five tournaments, but he's never really made an impression on me until this tournament. So like Hirado Umi, Chuda no Umi just got 10 wins, his best ever at his highest ever rank, except this is Maegashira 12, so it's a little bit different, and Chuda no Umi is 31, not 24, and that is very different. I think he's going to get promoted pretty well in the next tournament. We're going to see if he can handle it up there. Not too optimistic, but a great tournament for you, Chuda no Umi. Attaboy. Maegashira 6 Oho just got his first Kachi Koshi in the Maegashira single digits. Attaboy, buddy. Remember, he is also only 24 and could have another wrinkle to his sumo. Maegashira 4, Tobizaru up there right at the joy line, ended up facing a lot of Sanyaku and ended up getting 9 total wins. It looks like he's going to be back up to like the Maegashira 1 line. He's 32. His sumo is based on movement and he is still getting wins. Hey, Tobizaru, attaboy. And our final attaboys go to the top three finishers in Judeo. Judeo 8, Shiro Kuma. Judeo 10, Shishi. And Judeo 13, Hakuoho. Shiro Kuma is 25, just got 12 wins at Judeo 8, and I think he's going to get promoted in the next tournament. Can't wait to see what's next for Shiro Kuma. 
Shishi got 11 wins. Uh, I don't think a promotion's in the card for him. I think he's just a little too far down. But the 27-year-old Ukrainian seems to have finally turned a corner in his sumo. And of course, possibly burying the lead, Haku Oho is finally starting to look like himself again. He got 11 wins. I think one more strong basho should get him back up to Makauchi by the end of the year. We are hoping. He turns 21 before the next basho, so there is still a lot of runway for him to get healthy and improve. Come on, Haku Oho. You got this. boy. And now it's time for our recurring segment, Worried, where we look at wrestlers who did not have a great basho, and we discuss whether or not we are worried about their prospects going forward. First up, I am worried about Maegashira 12 Asanoyama. In fact, I don't know anyone who saw this last tournament who wouldn't be worried about Asanoyama. So it's official, it's a torn ACL, he'll be out for six months. I can't think of a single activity where a torn ACL helps you, let alone sumo. So he's going to be out for a bit. What's he going to be like when he returns? I think the real question here for Asanoyama is what does he envision his sumo future looking like? Uh, I mean, because we're looking at at least six months to recover from the surgery. Goodness knows how much rehab it's going to take to get himself back up to Makauchi, which is going to take at least two more years. He's already in his 30s. I just don't know why he would want to do that unless sumo lifer, he's in it to win it, or if he doesn't have elder stock yet and he's just looking to get that going, which would be great. But for right now, I would say that the, the, the top shelf Asanoyama years are over. Next up, Maegashira 3, Takayasu. Similar, uh, former Ozeki, uh, except even older. He's 34 and his Kyujos have really, really been piling up. Uh, but it doesn't look like it's as bad as a torn ACL, but whatever it is, he was not able to wrestle effectively this tournament. I still say there is one 15-day tournament coming up where, where Takayasu can dive back in there and possibly get that Yusho. I still believe, I still believe, but man, I am worried about his long-term prospects. I, I, I do not think there is any world where Takayasu gets like three healthy tournaments in a row, like get him back up to the Sanya. I think we're past that. I am worried about Maegashira 11 Nishikigi. Let us not forget this man was one of our Komasubi earlier this year. <laughs> And since the very first time he made Komasubi in September of last year, he has gotten a total of one Kachikoshi in those six tournaments. And also, in those six tournaments, he got 33 total wins. So for a year of sumo, his past year has gotten 33 wins. And the worst part is, it appears to be getting worse. He's had three deep Make Koshi in the last three tournaments, a three, a five, and now a five again. It's supposed to be getting easier the further he gets down the Maegashira ranks, but the first week especially, he looked horrible. Hoping for a little bit of a bounce back because he seemed to like tail up at the end of the tournament, but for a guy who's 33, everything is trending in the wrong way. Nishikigi, I'm a little worried. I am not worried about Maegashira 1 Atami Fuji. Yes, he still has not been able to get that Kachikoshi up at Maegashira 1 to get him that Sanyaku debut. Although an 8 and 7 probably wouldn't have gotten to Sanyaku this tournament. We got a lot of people wanting to get up to that Komasubi rank. But his sumo looks solid. He looks like he is focused. He's still losing a couple matches every tournament that he shouldn't lose. But hey, that's happening all the way up the Bansuke at this point. He's almost 22, will be 22 before the next tournament. Still so much of his pre-peak era to improve, and he's already up at the top 10, basically, of sumo. Not worried. Maegashira 3, Gonoyama, not worried about him. Okay, he did get a 5 and 10 up in the joy, but I don't think he's quite there yet. I think Gonoyama is going to take a while to really hit his peak. He's only 26, so he does have a little bit of room to grow, but I'm looking at guys like Kirishima, Daesho, guys like that who really didn't start breaking out till they were like 27, 28. So I think this is going to be a similar case. And Judio 2, Takeru Fuji. Not worried, but with an asterisk. Uh, I'm a little worried just in general about anyone who seems to have trouble coming back from a long-term injury, and that appears to be Takeru Fuji right now. But uh, he did go Kyujo to start the tournament, went on Kyujo, returned, got two straight wins, and then re kyujo -ed. Obviously, he did this so he would not fall out of Judio into Makushido. Oh, those two wins seem to lock it in. He's going to be in Judio next tournament. And if he is ready to go, I expect him to do very well in the next tournament. But a lot of you in the comments have been like, ah, oh, Takara Fuji's coming back. He's going to be winning you show. Now, there's a difference between healthy enough to fight and 100%. Let us not assume anyone who has been out this long is going to return 100%. Like, let's be optimistic. Let's give him all the support we can. Uh, but Takara Fuji, I'm, I'm guessing, is not going to immediately return to Makauchi and immediately start winning Yusho. So, I'm not worried about a guy who came back and seemed to win two matches on demand. That seems awesome. So it looks like things are trending in the right direction. Uh, but let's all 
take a second and see how he returns to Judo, hopefully next tournament. Now we got to see who's taken that midnight train to Judo. All right, this promotion demotion picture is not ideal. Uh, a lot of times they're clean, or at least clean-ish, and you can sort of see where the promotions and demotions are going to come from. But uh, as I alluded to in the quick strike, this one is going to be messy. So on the demotion side, it looks like we have five Makauchi wrestlers who deserve demotion, and one who's sort of borderline. The previously mentioned Maegashira 12, Asano Yama, only got three wins down there. Went Kyujo, he's out for six months. He's definitely going down to Judo. Maegashira 17, Nishiki Fuji, right down there at the bottom of the Bonscape, six and nine. Sorry, you're heading down to Judo. Maegashira 15, Chiyo Shoma, came back from Kyujo and ended up actually doing decently, but only five wins at Maegashira 15 means he's going down. Maegashira 5, Onosho, zero wins at Kyujo. Mathematically, that's a demotion. Maegashira 13, Takara Fuji, five wins. It's going to be close, but mathematically, he should be in Judo. Now, Maegashira 3, Takayasu, that's going to be a borderline case in most Bansuke, but I think in this case, he should be pretty safe. And I say that because looking at Judeo, we do not have a lot of like definitely promotable records. We can start with Judeo 1, Onokatsu, who got a 9 and 6. That's a definite promotion. And Judeo 8, Shirokuma, the champion, he got a 12 and 3, and that should be enough for an honest promotion. Here's where things get weird. Like I said, we have five demotable records, definitely, and we apparently have two promotable records. So, where are the other promotions coming from? Well, we have three maybes. Now, as you'll see at the top of the Judeo Bansuke, we didn't get a whole lot of Kachi Koshi up there. In fact, one of the closest ones we got was Judeo 3, Kiton Waka with 8 wins. Now, that is going to be a slight over-promotion, but I think it's close enough we could see him at the very bottom of Makauchi. Then we start looking at Judeo 6, Tamashoho with 9. Again, that's an over-promotion. And Judeo 10, Shishi got 11. He got the Jun Yu show, but again, that's a huge over-promotion. So I believe we will be over-promoting at least one member of the Judeo team. I believe we are going to have a three up, three down, where we're going to see Onokatsu, we're going to see Shirokuma, and we're going to see Kitanawaka, slowly overpromoted, bumped up to Makauchi. I think this is going to save a couple of our favorites who are just going to hang on by the edge of their fingernails into Makauchi. Guys like Takeyasu, guys like Takara Fuji, and guys like Onosho. <laughs> Now, I think Onosho is going to end up staying in Makauchi, and this is rare. This hasn't happened since 1998. That is, 0-15 at Maegashira 5 has not been demoted to Judeo. And Onosho knows this because back in 2018, he got an 0-15 at Maegashira 5, and he got demoted. But this time, I think he's going to be okay. <laughs> Now some of you, if you've had a chance to like work with me on out-of-town theater gigs, know sometimes I like to throw sumo nights where a whole bunch of civilians show up who don't know sumo, and we explain sumo and we have a blast. Uh, and one of the things I always have to explain is the ranking system. And NHK has this lovely like little pyramid diagram where it's like Maegashira and then it works away with Sanyaku all the way up and the pyramid goes upwards in sumo. Uh, I feel like where we are in the story of sumo is that we have a pyramid, but the pyramid has no point. I feel like every other rank in sumo, every other part of the sumo ecosystem is holding up its end of the bargain, but we just don't have anyone who's that alpha dog. I say this because a very old and past his prime Yokozuna just walked in and walked out with a Yusho, fighting not his best. And I say this with the full belief that Terana Fuji has been a great Yokozuna. I think if you put him in a group with all the Yokozuna, he's clearly in the above average pile, but... We can't help but noticing it feels like the competition is much, much lighter than it used to be. Now, we have talked about a weaker Banzage before. You can check out, like, the end of the year report in 2022. We're going to be diving into it a bit more in the next Hagaki Oi, so stay tuned for that. The question on everyone's mind is, who is going to step up? Because it feels like the older generation has collectively started taking a step back. Terana Fuji is clearly not the wrestler he was a couple years ago, and he never will be again. Asano Yama clearly passed his prime at this point. And even though he's just turning 28, nominally still in his peak, Takakesho looks like he is also taking a step back. If we look at Judo, we have some of our old Makauchi favorites like Miyogidu and Aoyama, who already seem so far past their prime, we're not going to see them again in Makauchi. Now the crazy thing is when a whole bunch of people take a step back, it creates the illusion that the people who have not moved at all have taken a step forward. And the weird truth is, is that starting next year, the 27 and below cohort will be in possession of Sumo. The question is, what are they going to do with it when they get it?
Thank you so much for joining us here on the Doyo. Uh, if you have not already, please like and subscribe. That just tells all of the YouTube robots that more people want to see the Doyo, and it'll show it to more people. Do it. It's price of free. Please stay tuned to the channel. We have a Hagaki Yoi coming up. I'm doing the second part of the Yokozuna episode where we are going to be talking about the near misses and the people who had like super overkill to become a Yokozuna. I have heard you in the comments. This is coming. All right, but everyone, stay safe, stay strong, stay healthy, and I will see you next time on the Doyo. Yeah.